I am talking about a portfolio of credits. What is the risk involved with it? So typically, whenever we talk about uh, analyzing the risk in any credit portfolios, we are looking at uh, various elements. We have been talking about any kind of credit risk. We talk about uh, probability of default, the loss given default. We talk about uh, what is the probability of fall in ratings, degradation of uh, the credit ratings. Right, so all these things do come up even when we are uh, evaluating individual securities. But when I am looking at credit risk in a portfolio framework, apart from all these things, I am also looking at okay, uh, let's say this is uh, one obliger and this is the other obliger. Probably it's like borrower 1, borrower 2 and borrower 3. I have created these 3 borrower, these 3, uh, these 3 uh, lending securities or uh, these 3 instruments, I have merged them into a portfolio. Right, because I have provided the loans to three borrowers and I am looking at the overall risk in a portfolio framework. So that is where I am observing the portfolio credit risk. Now, identifying the probability of default, the loss given default and all these things for individual, individual uh, uh, positions is more or less fine. But when we look at it in this uh, grouped kind of a framework, we are also looking at the correlation. We also have to look at the relationship between a pair of a pair of uh, the credits, right? I have to uh, look out for the relation between B1 and B2 with respect to default. Like if B1 defaults, what is the probability that B2 will default? Is Are these two defaults completely independent? Or is there any depend, Is there any close resemblance? Probably if B1 is defaulted, does it mean that B2 also is going to default uh, quite, uh, uh, in, quite in no time? All these things have to be understood and that is where we are trying to measure this default correlation. It's a measure talking about what is the probability of multiple defaults in this portfolio. What is the probability of multiple defaults occurring at a point in time itself? So for that, the simple way, probably if I start off with a two credit kind of a portfolio, Right, probably are uh, the two firm credit portfolio. If I am seeing, let's assume individually that the probability of default, the probability uh, of uh, default for the first firm is pi one during a particular period of time. The probability of default for the second firm. Let me assume it as pi 2. Then the probability of default of first and the second firms, both the firms defaulting, I can take it as pi 1 2, means the firms which of them are both defaulting. Which means now, yeah, overall the firm D1 defaulting, the firm 1 defaulting is pi 1. But along with uh, the firm 2, defaulting is pi 1, 2. Means if I want to know the probability of D1 alone, the firm D1 alone defaulting, I can write it as pi 1 minus pi 1, 2. Similarly, the probability of D2 alone defaulting, second firm alone defaulting, it is pi 2 minus pi 1, 2. And uh, both 
both uh, firm 1 and firm 2 defaulting as we have seen it is pi 1 2 and so the probability that none of the two are defaulting probably 1 minus of all these things because at least one firm defaulting from here is coming when I am adding all these coming out to pi 1 plus pi 2 minus pi 1 2. So at least one firm defaulting probability is this. So the probability that none of the firms are defaulting coming out as 1 minus pi 1 minus pi 2 plus pi 1 2. So the same, uh, uh, it can very well be uh, viewed th through this kind of a mechanism trying to work out with uh, the probabilities of default uh, for each. But now you see, if I take the same into a three firm framework, right? two firm framework probably I require four different probabilities here. But look at a three firm framework. Okay, the probability of default for the first firm, pi 1. Probability of default for the second firm, pi 2. Probability of default for the third, pi 3. First and second, right? Probability of default for the first and second, pi 1, 2. Probability of default for second and third, you will find so many combinations that have to be found out pi 1 3 then similarly uh, i am talking about all three firms defaulting probability of d1 and d2 and d3 pi 1 2 3 and now if i want to talk about uh, d uh, pi probability of d1 alone d2 alone now there is a huge effort that is going in and overall we will end up with finding out 8 different probabilities which is nothing but 2q. Two, here we had 2 squared, 4 different probabilities coming up because it is a 2 firm. Here we will have uh, 3 firms so it will go to 2 cube, 8 different probabilities and probably if I have a 10 firm scenario probably I may end up computing 2 power 10 calculations of probabilities of defaults pairwise which becomes a very tedious kind of an exercise. So that is the reason this is one of the major limitations of this kind of a framework. Alright, now again moving uh, further. So once we know these probabilities, now we can think of the means. Right, because it is estimated, uh, all these are going as a simple Bernoulli trend because either default or not default. So, these all can be treated as simple uh, Bernoulli trends itself. So, probability that at least one of the firms is defaulting is this much and the probability that none of the firms is defaulting is going to be this much. Now, looking at uh, a few more calculations, what is the expected value? of the default of each firm. Expected value of default of each firm is nothing but pi i and the variance of default for each firm comes out as expected xi squared minus expected value of xi whole squared. Now even this is pi minus pi squared. So, the variance will come out as pi into 1 minus pi. We know that from a Bernoulli distribution, we can say if the mean is pi, the variance is going to be pi i into 1 minus pi i, right? So, that is the same logic which I am applying uh, here. So, this is the variance. And what about the covariance between any two pairs? Covariance between x1 and x2 means... Uh, two firms, the covariance uh, between the two firms default 